Alright yo, what's going on guys, it's Lake and welcome to today's video. Since it is a new year, I should do a new Elgato settings video. Um, this is going to be very quick, straight to the point. I'm not going to really try to make it as long as the last one. Um, the last, I think I made two of these actually. Um, they do really well. So this is kind of to fix your Elgato lag and freeze. Um, currently I use the Game Capture HD60 Pro. This one is actually built into my PC. But this can apply to any of the Elgato capture cards that you guys use. I've been making YouTube videos with Elgatos for a very long time, so if you guys have any questions, I'll try to get back to these. I'll answer as much as these as I can. As opposed to like the previous ones, since the videos are so old, the notifications don't really come up as often. A lot of people still ask me questions on my one that I made in 2017, because it has like over, it has like 17,000 views or something, but people are still asking me questions on that, and that's kind of hard to get back and read and respond to, because um, people comment from like months ago, and I don't really get the notification because it's not the most recent video I posted. So this is just a little update on what I really do in my, my personal settings, but I'm gonna also show some different ways that you can vary your settings based on what you're using to record with. I'll also kind of just give a little generic kind of streaming idea as well um, because streaming is going to be different with Elgados as well because some Elgados can stream, some Elgados cannot. So I'm not going to waste anyone's time, I'm just going to get right into it. All I want to ask is just leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. So right here is actually my Elgato capture card. I have it full screen as you guys can see on my Black Ops 4. Um, the first thing is you want to change what you're recording to if you have multiple um, hard drives. Right now, my new volume hard drive is my one terabyte, but it's filled because I've been downloading so many games and I have so many videos I gotta upload that it's like literally full. Normally, I have like 600 gigs of um, full storage, but right now it's it's pretty full. We're gonna have to cut back on some stuff pretty soon. I'm gonna have to order another hard drive. So make sure that the first thing you do is you go to your settings. Make sure you pick a good file location and record your videos too, as well as screenshots. Screenshots, if you guys don't really utilize this. This is something I kind of recommend, especially for uploading YouTube videos. Um, just get a couple screenshots um, of your gameplays of like um, some really cool moments or maybe like some a cinematic or like a scene that looks really nice, like a really cool shot. Um, and just hit a screenshot. And then you can throw it into Photoshop or paint or something, just add some text and then boom, you got a thumbnail. It's so easy. That's what I actually use for most of my thumbnails is I just take a screenshot from my Elgato recording and done. First thing is with sharing, because I turn all my sharing things off. Um, I always convert new videos to MP4 file. Um, if you guys use, if you guys like throw in a webcam or overlay, um, make sure you have that on, um, or your commentary audio. I normally don't use my commentary audio on here, um, but that's something that you can use as well. It's this little blue thing, you can enable it. Um, it's it's an option and you can always have it reduce game sound as well, but I record my audio separate using Audacity. Um, that's something you guys can look up as well. I don't have a video on that, but that's just what I use to record my audio separate. <clears throat> Unless you want it to export to separate files, then you can select your webcam or your audio or your uh, Gato sound capture, which would be like your desktop audio. You can have that in separate files as well if you're more advanced. That's not really something I do because I already record my stuff separately using other programs. But if that's something you're interested in, then that's always an option as well. I always have my auto updates on, so that way I can make sure that my program is, is up to date. Um, you can actually also look for updates as well separately, so I just always keep that checked. My decoder, I have it set to my graphics card. You can do your software built in, but if you have a graphics card, I recommend just doing that. Um, for this right here, this right here doesn't really change anything quite crazy. Um, I just set mine to highest quality, just because I wanted to push my graphics card to the hardest. Um, I don't really see a big difference in using this either way. It doesn't change your file sizes. It doesn't change much. I'm pretty sure this is kind of more for streaming. Um, but I just have it to highest quality because I think quality is the most important for me. But if you're having struggles with your Elgato, um, try throwing it on best performance. This isn't really a problem that I've ever had to go back and really use because I'll show you guys other options to help your performance. But um, if you are struggling with a lot of performance and lag, maybe throw it on best performance instead of best quality. So moving on, I'm going to go down to this settings. Now, my input device is my Xbox One, but you can use it for literally anything, um, like a PlayStation 4, iPad, PC, whatever. Um, but I just use it for my um, Xbox. If you do have a PC, I recommend using OBS. It's a free to, to download program. Um, and if you guys want to see an OBS video, uh, let me know. I can show you guys my settings for that as well as some stream settings too in the future. But I have it set to my Xbox One. My audio is just the default uh, Elgato Game Capture HD 60 Pro. The color range I just have on standard. My profile, I always do 1080. Um, 720 isn't bad. Like a lot of people think the 720 is terrible. Um, but I don't think 720 is that bad. It's the YouTube default. I just do 1080p because 
I'm a little try hard, but 720p 60 FPS if you're playing like Xbox 360 games that are backwards compatible, like Black Ops 2 or any of the old Call of Duties, um, then 720p 60 FPS is still actually pretty good. But I do 1080p and I do allow 60 frames per second. Um, now this right here is where you do get into file sizes. I keep my quality on the best, um, which is going to be 60 megabytes per second and it's going to be 27.1 gigabytes an hour, which is a lot of storage. The lower that you put this down, um, it'll actually like take a second because it's going to drop the quality. Um, it's just going to change your megabytes per second. So it's going to drop to 14 megabytes per second. It's only going to take up 6.4 gigabytes per hour. Um, this doesn't change your quality a ton. It's not like drastic. Um, but that's something that's kind of more for file sizes. And if you guys get into file sizes and render settings, um, you guys will learn that the higher the megabytes per second in the quality, the better. The better performance it's going to like look, I guess. Just, I guess, I don't know. But if you're struggling with your performance, whatever, usually I think the default's just right there and better. Um, but I just throw mine to best because I have the file size to mess with. Recently I don't, but I just got to go in and clear some videos or order another hard drive. But um, I leave these two checked. I throw my thing on best just because... Um, as soon as I'm done recording, I go in and I edit the video and then I upload the video and then I delete it. So I'm instantly, you know, taking up space and then clearing up space right after. Now the big thing that people don't really do if you have like a laptop or a computer that's not really so well, just when you're recording videos, as it just full screens, when you're recording videos, something that it kind of takes up a lot of process in your CPU. Um, this is something that I used to do. I used to actually turn off my display preview. Um, you can still record and you can still have flashback recording and stuff and everything operate in the background without this preview. The thing is with the preview is it draws so much power to the Elgato just to show you the preview. Um, it's not really even worth it if you're recording videos and you're having the problems with it. So what I would recommend is just turning off that preview and bang, that's, that's, it, it takes up so much unnecessary space. When I used to record with a laptop in my Elgato HD60, um, or not HD60, just my Elgato HD, just this basic square one, um, I think I still have that. That would take up so much just useless power on my laptop that I couldn't really record. It would just come out glitchy, the file would be corrupted, it would be like green, it would have like that problem where the audio wouldn't be lined up and it would have like the green slices or whatever when I would go to edit Sony Vegas and it would just crash my Sony Vegas all the time. And then once I figured out if I can disable my preview and still record, it was it worked perfectly. So that's my biggest thing. Live streaming, live streaming is all based on your upload speeds and your, inter and your internet. Um, so I recommend taking an internet speed test either through Google or like through Comcast or whatever. Comcast kind of lies a little bit, so I like doing Google. I and mean, I think Google lies a little bit too, but that's all right. Um, but you can connect your stream, either YouTube or Twitch or Mixer or like whatever. You can change the title from here, but I don't really recommend it. I usually just change my title from there. Um, if your upload speed is higher than 8 megabytes per second, then you can stream at 1080p 8 megabytes per second. That's normally what I do. Um, but if your upload speed is like a 3 or 4 or 5, then I recommend turning it down to like a 720p 30 FPS at like 4 megabytes per second or like 3. Um, it's not going to look crazy good, but it'll look good. But I recommend streaming through OBS. That's I'll always preach OBS. And you have to have an Elgato capture card that can support streaming. Um, some Elgato capture cards, like the original, um, and I think just the HD, um, they cannot stream. You have to have like the HDS or the Elgato 60S or something, the Stream Edition, or like the HD60 Pro, or like the HD60 Pro 4K, whatever. Um, I don't know what the new one's called. So I just recommend streaming through OBS. That's what I've always done. I have like when I first started streaming, I did use Elgato. Um, the Elgato program just for my gameplay and my audio and it actually worked perfectly. Um, it's just based on your upload speeds And if your computer can't handle it try just turning off your preview And if that doesn't work either leave a comment and I'll try to link up and just talk to you about it and see what's going on For my game audio. I always leave my game audio the normal 71 so like the 0 DB or whatever because um, I go back and I edit in Sony Vegas if you're not really editing. I do highly recommend editing and disabling resample in your videos before you uploading them because that is crucial and it will look so much better. But I always leave my game audio normal and I don't do my commentary. Um, but if you do turn on your commentary so that way your blue snowball right here is reducing game sound, I recommend either turning your game sound down in game as well or turning it down on here to at least like maybe negative 10 dB. Um, that way your game audio is not overpowering your voice and that's something that you can play with like record a little like snippet of you talking about nothing and to see where you like that the most but I don't use my commentary and as for my commentary um, I would leave that at the default I think it's 50 where it's the zero um, automatically reducing game sound is 
a default setting. Um, if you're playing like Call of Duty or something or like Apex, I don't think it would be that big of a deal. If you're playing like a story game and you're talking over like a storyline and subtitles and stuff isn't on, I don't re recommend having that turned on. But that's, that's totally up to you as well. That's something that you can play with and you will learn. And then you can have your video title, your game description. I just have one, one, nothing, nothing, because I don't like having long titles on my uh, my files and stuff. And if you do need updates, if you can hit this little I right here, and you can check for updates as well to make sure that your thing is up to date, even though mine already does auto check. And I think that's it. I don't think there's anything else I need to go over as it's just sitting here loading because I accidentally hit the info. Ooh, I do have a new version available. We're gonna update. We're gonna update it later. I think it's okay right now. So if you guys have any questions, be sure to drop a comment below. I hope this did help you. If you guys have any problems with your Elgatos, or if you guys have a different scenario that I didn't cover in this video, please be, be sure to leave a comment and I will respond to them. And yeah, have fun grinding. Keep posting those videos, uploading, streaming, and you know, good luck to you guys in the future. Keep doing what you enjoy because that's what's most important. Just be happy in life. And yeah, this is Malik and I'll see you guys later. Peace out.